A few days ago, one of the pro members posted a site in the private server under the Video Ideas channel asking if I could break down one of its scroll animations. And I think most of you have probably seen this kind of scroll interaction too on a lot of award winning sites where a section gets pinned as it enters view and as you scroll, a set of cards slide in and stack on top of each other. Then as you keep scrolling, those cards scatter out into a clean 2x2 two two grid and eventually the section unpins and scroll continues as usual. We haven't covered anything quite like this on the channel yet, so I thought it would be a fun one to explore. So after spending over a couple hours on experiments, I put together this similar scroll sequence using GSAP and scroll trigger. The cards animate in with smooth power easing and as you scroll further, they shift and settle into place across the layout. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to build scroll animations like this using simple HTML, CSS, JavaScript and scroll trigger. If you find these kinds of ripples helpful, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into the code. Let's start setting up the basic HTML structure. First, I'll create three sections, one for the intro, one for the spotlight animation and one for the outro. For the intro and outro sections, I am just adding a single h1 in each with some placeholder text. Nothing fancy, just enough to give the page a bit of structure and provide some scroll context before and after the animation. Next, we'll move into the spotlight section. This is where the animation will happen. Inside it, there is a header element with an h1 tag that stays in place throughout the scroll. Below that, we have got a container with the class Spotlight Images which holds 4 image wrappers. Each image sits inside its own div with the class Spotlight Image and inside that is a regular image tag. We'll be animating these individually as a part of the scroll sequence but for now, they are just sitting in the DOM, stacked and ready to go. That's all we need for the initial HTML. Next, we'll jump into the CSS and style everything up. First of all, I'm importing a serif font from Google Fonts. This will be our main typeface across the entire layout. It gives the project that clean editorial feel. Next, I'll reset the default spacing across all elements by removing the margin and padding and making sure everything uses border box sizing. Then, I'll set the body to use the serif font we just imported. This applies it globally to all the text on the page. Next, I'll style the images so they always scale nicely. They'll take up the full width and height of their container and maintain the correct aspect ratio without stretching or distortion. After that, I'll style the main headings. All H1s will have a large, responsive font size, slightly reduced letter spacing and a tight line height just to give them that bold, impactful look. Next, I'll set up the base layout for each section. All three sections, intro, spotlight and outro, are full viewport height, take up the full width and include a bit of padding for breathing room. I'll also hide overflow in each section just to keep things contained when the animation plays. Then I'll style the headings inside the sections. Each one is centered on the page, takes up about half the width and uses a consistent text color across the layout. Now I'll apply background colors to each section. The intro and outro uses a slightly darker neutral tone, while the spotlight section, the one that holds our animation, uses a lighter background to help the image card stand out. Next, I'll start styling the spotlight image layout. The container that holds all the images is absolutely positioned, stretched to cover the entire spotlight section and set to ignore pointer events since it's pretty visual and we don't need any interaction. Then I style the individual image wrappers. Each one is absolutely positioned at the center of the screen. They are given a fixed width, a defined aspect ratio and a soft border radius to round the corners. Initially, they are pushed away off screen using a vertical offset. This gives us space to animate them upward into view later. I am also adding a will change property to optimize the transforms during animation and setting overflow to hidden so the image stays clipped within the cart. Finally, on smaller screens, I'll make sure the heading stretches to full width so it stays readable on mobile. That's all we need for the main layout and styling. Next, we'll jump into the JavaScript and start wiring up the scroll animation using scroll trigger. Alright, first I'm importing GSAP, which we'll use for all our animations along with the scroll trigger plugin, which lets us tie the animation timeline to scroll progress. I'm also bringing in Lennis. This is the smooth scroll library we are using for this project. Then, I'll wait for the DOM to fully load by wrapping everything inside a DOM content loaded event listener. This just makes sure all our HTML elements are available in the DOM before we try to access or animate them. 
Next, I am registering scroll trigger as a plugin with GSAP. This is a required step. If we don't register it, GSAP won't know we are using scroll trigger and any scroll based logic we write later just won't run. Now let's set up Lennis. To keep it simple, I am just pasting a small block of code from the Lennis documentation. Basically, we create a new instance of Lennis and then we tell it to update scroll trigger every time a scroll event happens. That way, both Lennis and scroll trigger stay perfectly in sync even with the smooth scroll effect. Next, I'll define the final positions for all four images using an array. Each entry in the array is a pair of x and y values, basically coordinates that represent where each image should end up in the second half of the scroll animation. We'll animate from the center of the screen out to these final positions and this array gives us the targets we'll use for each image. After that, I'll select all the image wrappers inside the spotlight section using a query selector. These are the four elements we'll be transforming throughout the animation, moving them into view, rotating them and finally spreading them out into a grid. And now, I'll create a scroll trigger instance. This is what ties the animation to scroll progress. We set the trigger to the spotlight section, so the animation begins when that section reaches the top of the viewport. We define the scroll distance using the end value. In this case, it runs for several viewport heights to give enough space for the full transition to play out slowly and smoothly. We also enable pin, which locks the spotlight section in place while we scroll through the animation. That way, the image cards animate in while the section stays completely fixed. Pin spacing is turned on so the scroll position doesn't jump when the section ends and it just pushes the rest of the page down as needed. And finally, we enable scrub which means the animation doesn't play as a timeline, it's tied directly to scroll progress. This gives us frame by frame control, so every scroll movement updates the animation in real time. Alright, that sets up the foundation. Next, we'll go inside the onUpdate function and start writing the logic that moves and rotates each image based on how far we have scrolled through the section. First of all, I'm grabbing the progress value from the scroll trigger instance. This is a number between 0 and 1, where 0 means we are at the very start of the scroll animation and 1 means we are at the very end. We'll use this value to figure out how far we have scrolled and use that to calculate the transform values for each image. Next, I'm defining a list of initial rotation values, one for each of the four images. These are the angles the cards should start with when they first appear on the screen. They are slightly different for each card to make the animation feel a little less uniform and a bit more organic. Then, I'm setting up another list. This one contains the scroll offsets for when each card should start animating in. So instead of all the images moving at the same time, they'll start entering one after the other based on their assigned delay. This helps stagger the motion and gives it a more rhythmic layered feel. After that, I loop through each image using a for each loop. Inside the loop, I'll calculate all the animation values for each image individually. First, I grab the initial rotation angle from the array based on the current index. Then, I get the scroll offset at which this specific image should start animating. And I also calculate when that first phase should end. To do that, I take the remaining distance from the start point to the max scroll value for phase 1 and I scale it slightly so each animation gets a smooth easing curve and doesn't feel too rushed. Next, I set up 3 values, x, y and rotation. For now, I am initializing x with the default value and will update y and rotation based on the scroll progress. Now let's walk through how we calculate the y position and rotation during phase 1, the entrance animation. First. I check if we haven't reached the start of the animation yet for this image. If that's the case, we'll leave it off screen near the bottom and apply its initial rotation. Then, if we are somewhere inside the phase 1, between the start and end thresholds, I'll calculate a progress value just for this phase. If we have passed the end point already, I clamp the phase progress to 1. Otherwise, I take the current scroll progress, subtract the starting offset and divide it by the total phase duration to get a normalized value between 0 and 1. Then. I pass that value through an easing function using a custom cubic formula. This gives us a smooth ease out curve so the motion starts fast and slows down as it settles. Once we have that eased progress, I calculate the new y position, the image starts off screen near the bottom and as we scroll it, it moves upward into place stopping just slightly above the center. This rotation stays fixed during this phase, but only adjust it later during the grid transition. Finally, if we have already passed phase 1 completely. I just lock in the end position of Y and keep the rotation angle consistent. At this point, we have all values we need for this stage of the scroll. So I'll apply them using a GSAP's set method and update the image's transform with its current X, Y and rotation values. This happens in real time on every scroll frame and it's what creates that layered reveal effect as the cards start sliding in one by one. 
in the next block we'll handle the second phase where the cards scatter out from the center into a 2 by 2 grid layout first i'm defining when each image should begin the second moment just like before i'm using a staggered array of scroll offsets so each card starts transitioning at a slightly different scroll progress value this keeps the sequence feeling smooth and spaced out instead of everything snapping at once next i calculate the start and end range for phase 2 for the current image i'm using a similar easing window as before multiplying the all available scroll range by a factor to give us some room at the end this gives us control over exactly how long the second part of the animation should take and how it ramps into the final layout then i grab the final x and y positions for this image from the array we defined earlier these are the target positions where each image should end up once the animation finishes forming that clean 2 by 2 scattered grid now we check if we are currently in the phase 2 So if scroll progress is somewhere between the images individual phase start and point 95 if that's true we calculate how far through phase 2 we are if we have already passed the end point for this phase we clamp the progress to 1 otherwise we normalize the scroll progress across the current range and again ease it using the same cubic curve this gives us that smooth soft acceleration and deceleration we used in phase 1 With the eased progress value, we now calculate the updated x and y positions. Each image starts centered at minus 50 on both axes and then moves out toward its final position. To do this, I take the difference between the final and initial position and multiply it by the eased progress. This lets each card move along a curved path toward its destination, fully synced to scroll movement. At the same time, we also animate the rotation. In phase one, each image had its own unique tilt. Now we gradually reduce that rotation to zero. So by the time the image reaches its final spot, it sits perfectly upright. Finally, if we scroll past the end of phase two entirely, meaning progress is greater than 0.95, I just lock the image into its final position and reset the rotation to zero. This makes sure nothing jitters or shifts unexpectedly after the animation finishes. So at this point, we have handled both phases of the scroll animation. First, the image is centered one by one. with smooth vertical motion and fixed rotation then they scatter outward into their grid positions while also using back to zero rotation and all of this is controlled directly through scroll thanks to scroll trigger and the live on update loop that wraps up the core animation logic hope you found the video helpful see you in the next one